Please join me in the Christian reading. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please stand for the call to worship. Let us come and worship the God who is truth. We come to praise the one in whom there is no falseness. God invites us to reflect the divine image. In truth, we open our eyes to God. Let us praise the one who knows us and loves us. Let us us ourselves to truth. Our hymn of praise is Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
prayer of the day found in your bulletin. We come into your presence, gracious God, at your invitation. You invite sinners to come and find forgiveness. You invite your forgiven people to share the forgiveness with others. Help us to not only receive, but also to share with others your loving forgiveness. Amen. Let us that confess to God and before one another our sins and especially our tendencies to receive forgiveness for ourselves more easily than we grant it to others. Let us confess our sins. We confess to you, O God, and therefore one another, that we have sinned. We have failed to be your obedient people. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved others as we love ourselves. We are quick to receive your forgiveness, even though we know we will be back next week seeking it again for the same sins. Yet we are loath to offer forgiveness to others until we are satisfied that they have paid sufficiently for the hurt they have given us. We are quick to speak the truth about others, but slow to speak it about ourselves. Forgive us our hypocritical ways and grant that we might know the depths of your forgiveness as we offer it to others. Let us finish our prayer of confession together. Forgive my rejection of your will and my contempt for your promise. Heal my divided spirit and reveal your way in my laws once again. Let sinfulness no longer define me. Yoke me to the way of my Lord. Amen. God delights in our relationship and gladly forgives us so that we can open ourselves completely to God. May the power of the Spirit enable us all to forgive as we have been forgiven. Chapter, chapter 34, verses 1 through 8. We will be reading responsibly. I will read the odd verses, and you will read the even verses. <clears throat> Let us read the word of the Lord. <clears throat> I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glorify the Lord. Let the earth be Glorify the Lord with me. <clears throat> Let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This is for me, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them.
gospel reading is from John chapter 6. I will be reading verse 35 and then skipping to verses 41 through 51. Hear the word of the Lord. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by God, everyone who has heard the Father, and learned from him comes to him. Learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except for the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Some people just seem to be meant for greatness. Type. They rise in their profession at an astounding rate. It seems no one is surprised because their jump to prominence was predicted. Often, there will be a story from their childhood or teenage years with someone saying, I just knew he or she would go far in life. There was always something special about him or her. Charles Axel Wood, son of the great golfer, the golf great Tiger Wood, comes to mind as someone who great things were expected. No one was surprised that he became a notable golfer. In fact, the surprise would have been if he doesn't meet those expectations. Even now, he's planning a comeback. Likewise, no one was surprised when Michael Douglas, son of the movie star Kirk Douglas, went on to become a bankable star in his own right. And LeBron Brani Raymore James Jr., son of the basketball superstar LeBron James, is already showing great promise in the sport. Sometimes, however, it's surprising to see how far someone from humble beginnings can rise to the top of their field. Not much was expected of them. But when they became noticed, some people, especially those who knew them best, said, who would ever have thought that he or she would grow up to do that? Elon Musk, who this year became the richest man in the world at a net worth of $185 billion, started out as a janitor of a boiler room at a lumber mill. Marissa May, a CEO of Yahoo, now worth $540 million, started out as a checkout clerk. Madonna, now worth $800 million, started out as a cashier at Dunkin' Donuts. Today, we look at Jesus when no one expected much of him. John's gospel is very different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John lays out a different view of Jesus' life, and that fits his pur stated purpose of writing. These things are written that you may become 
that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Our text today follows in chapter 6 two of the signs which John used to point to the identity of Jesus. First, Jesus is followed by a large crowd to the Sea of Galilee. They'd seen what he was doing for the sick, and they wanted more. Jesus asked Philip where they could buy bread for the crowd. Philip replied that it was both physically and economically impossible for them to feed thousands of the people gathered. Jesus took the five barley loaves, as we know, and the two fish from the young boy, and when he had given thanks, the multiplied food was distributed to the entire crowd. When the people saw it, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. The next sign follows later that evening when Jesus sent the disciples to the other side of the sea. During the night, as the waves rose because of a strong wind, the disciples saw Jesus walking on water and coming near the boat. They were terrified. But Jesus said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. And then, immediately, the boat reached the land toward which they were going. When the crowd found Jesus the next day, they questioned him how he got there. He told them that they were looking, he told them that they were looking for him, not because they saw signs, but because you ate your full of the loaves. Shortly after that, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The implication of what Jesus was saying finally struck some of the crowd. Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? They said, in effect, we saw him grow up. We know his parents. Where does he get off saying that he came from heaven? What gives him the right to say that? We'll grant that he has done some amazing things, like the meal yesterday for the entire crowd, but saying he's from heaven, that's like saying he's God. We don't believe it. Jesus made some amazing claims throughout his ministry. John's Gospel records seven I am statements of Jesus. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine, and I am the bread of life, which appears in our text today. Well, all these statements are true and deserve our attention. Today's I am the bread of life is different from the others in that it talks about food. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. That, of course, was unthinkable for the Jewish people hearing him. It goes against God's law in Leviticus, forbidding the consumption of any blood, because blood is the life force of a creature. So to drink Jesus' blood and eat his flesh would be to consume the life force of Jesus. But that's really the point of this, isn't it? Jesus would go on to say elsewhere in this gospel, abide in me as I abide in you. Suddenly there's no need to be in the same God in order to be connected to God. I am the bread of life, and Jesus abides in us as we abide in him. In various ways, Christians celebrate Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, all around the world. And in these holy events, we hear echoes of Jesus when he said, I am the bread of life. Jesus claims to be the bread of life, presents a choice for us. His claim offended some people, and they left. Some are skeptical of it today. This claim can 
confused and continues to confuse some people. But they stuck with him and were blessed and found eternal life, just as Jesus promised. And we face similar choices today. One pastor I know put it like this. Jesus' claim offended the crowd who followed him then. The claim which still offends any who take it seriously today. For we expect God to come in might. God comes in weakness. Where we look for God to come in power. God comes in vulnerability. And when we seek God in justice and righteousness, which is after all, what we all expect from God. We find God, or are rather found by God in forgiveness and mercy. That is what God still offers us today, forgiveness and mercy and the bread of life. We live in a time when this is needed in abundance. The year 2020, was the one that many of us was glad to see it over. The overarching story was COVID-19 pandemic. At the end of 2020, about 88 million people had been infected worldwide, with about 2 million having died from the disease. In the United States alone, 21.7 million were infected, and 365,000 died from the virus. It affected every aspect of life, employment, education, family, and extended family, travel, entertainment, and even worship. Almost every day we found new ways our lives were disrupted by this pandemic. In addition to the pandemic, there was also great social upheaval in America. Radical ten racial tensions ran high, Political tensions ran high. Some people found these tensions ran all the way into their families, with family members pitted one against another. But there were, and there are, bright spots during all of this where God and God's people have been hard at work sharing God's love. YouTube church, Facebook church, parking lot church, church on YouTube, church on websites, all of these have become commonplace terms. Holy Communion has been shared and served in several new ways. The word of God is preached and people have responded and the work of God goes on. Zoom small group meetings for the church sprang up by the thousands. We even had Zoom Presbytery meetings this past year and still are having them. People are caring for one another in careful and thoughtful ways. Youth groups have met electronically in ways that many of the adults don't even understand. And the work of God goes on. And the word of God and the bread of life is shared. And the work of God goes on. Jesus came to earth over 2,000 years ago to bring salvation and hope and God's love and forgiveness to the world that desperately needed it. He was fully God and fully man. He was no ordinary man, but he brought and he brings today the love of God to a world where hope was all but God. The work of God goes on today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and sing this hymn, Just As I Am.
Metro Bulletin. It's from a statement of faith of 1977. Loving God, you have shown yourself to us in Jesus, perfect in every way, compassionate and kind, faithful and loving, gracious, hospitable, open. While you direct us to follow in his way and embrace the qualities that mark his life, we confess that we have stumbled and fallen. Our sins are real and they are many. Have mercy on us. Forgive our failings. Encourage us to start again, trusting that what we have seen in Jesus is true and nothing, not even our sins, can separate us from your love. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. God of love and liber liberation, we give thanks for the stories of our faith in which you fed Israel in the wilderness and Jesus fed the hungry crowds that followed him. Like them, we sometimes forget to be grateful for what we have and are consumed by complaining about what we do not have. Like them, we sometimes grab more than our daily bread. Help us to take only what we need and leave the rest for those who hunger. Forgive us when we follow Jesus or pray to you only seeking after our own good. Help us to pray for higher things, for the things that will equip us for the work of ministry and to perform the works of God. Holy One, we pray for this community, for its families, its individuals, its children. We pray for the sick and those facing the end of their day. May Christ dwell in their hearts through faith, and may, may they know that they are rooted and grounded in love. Comfort all who are suffering. Comfort those out west who are involved in those awful fires, who are losing so much. Let them feel your presence and love. We now pray for those especially whom we name. Mike, who is having renal failure. Gail's Aunt Jean, Gail, Mary Inez, Grace, Philip, Anita, Nora, Lou, Eric, Michael, Carter, Bruce and his wife, Sally, Phil Reed's daughter, Paula Thomas, and Lou's friends, Carol and Anita, and Vila's friends, Mrs. Campbell, James, J.R. Let them find relief from suffering and be restored to wholeness. Be with those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Walk with them through the valley and restore them body, mind, and spirit. We pray for the nations of the earth that the world may know plenty and peace. We pray for those who hunger for bread and for those who hunger for righteousness, that they will be fed what they need. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the bread of the world, giver of life. Give us this bread always. Let us now pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us for evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. has been given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Let us give a measure of what we have to the Lord.
join me in the prayer of dedication found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Loving God, as you fed your people in the wilderness, use our gifts, time, and talents as the manna to meet the hunger of the world in which we live. For Jesus' sake, amen. Our ascending hymn is Break Thou the Bread of Life on your insert. today is that you are now equipped for the work of ministry. Go in peace and be ready for the life of the world. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.